Hey guys, hope you're well. Um, I have a, an interesting video to, to put together on three uh, tools that I'm kind of using in my day-to-day -day workflow to enhance my, um, my productivity. So I generally try to test everything. I'm quite a, um, I, I enjoy using, using new tools, let's say. Um, I'm a big believer in trying to make your, your work as enjoyable as possible. And um, so I never have any hesitation to kind of try out new tools and basically just see if, if they actually fit. Uh, if I continue to use them, do they deliver value? Do they stick in, in any of my workflows? Um, these are three tools that I'm going to share that I started using a few months back and I still use them uh, to this day on a daily basis. So it's safe to say they have um, become a part of my, my daily routine and, um, and really help to, to enhance my, my productivity. So first off, we'll come into, come into the desktop. So this is a browser named Arc Browser. And it's a pretty big deal to kind of um, swap browsers. It's not something that I do very often. Um, but since using Arc, there is no way that I could go back to Chrome or like let alone anything else. Um, prior to that, I was using Chrome and sometimes Brave. So first thing to be clear on is Arc is, um, or sorry, Chrome itself is actually open source software, which means like the whole code base is actually accessible to anyone to use and build on top of. Um, and so Arc is actually still based on top of Chrome, just you'll notice like a completely different interface and set of features. Um, but the positive of that is it means that all of your Chrome extensions are still 100% compatible um, and they're just on like the right side here. So it's super easy to, um, you, you don't lose out on any of like the, the Chrome extensions um, that, that you've been using before. So Arc is also in beta. So I've not actually, I've literally used it as my go-to, as my day-to-day -day browser. I've not touched Chrome. I, I don't even think it's installed here in the past three months. I've never had any issues with like crashes or, or anything like that. Um, but the fact that it's in beta is also extremely interesting for me. Um, given all the features that it has so far, um, I'm very interested to see kind of what comes in future. So let's go through the fields. On the left-hand side here, you can see, um, instead of having a menu bar up at the top where we search for stuff, everything is here. Uh, here I can copy URLs, I can take screenshots and they have a feature that's very interesting where we can do a live screenshot. Um, again, just really nice thought out design and I can save this into one of my workspaces and it won't save as a screenshot, it will actually save as a live embed of this page. So let's say that I wanted to monitor, you know, how much, um, how many transactions we've done today in Stripe. I can literally take a screenshot and embed it on a dashboard for that particular workspace, and I can I just refresh it without ever needing to navigate in, into Stripe. Um, it's it's like a live embed feature, a live screenshot almost. Up here, these are like my most visited pages, um, and so these will follow me through any of my different workspaces. So I put Spotify, just literally anything that I use on like a day-to-day -day basis. And then if you see down the bottom here, I'll just make it larger so you can see the emojis. These are all different projects. So I can assign as many as I want. They call them spaces. And I, for every project that I work on in my life, I have one space assigned to it, which just keeps things like really organized. So just to give you an example, uh, I have a, I think, personal dashboard, fitness, money, um, research, uh, automations, OnlyFans, um, growing TikTok accounts, Tinder, Bumble, Integromat course, Georgia, uh, some other TikTok stuff. And then these are some new dashboards that, that I've be, been making. So any tab that is related, um, for example, to like my finances, like I have all of my investments here, uh, Wise account, PayPal account, banks, crypto exchanges, incomes, um, crypto coins that I find interesting, um, research and things like that. Uh, and again, this is just broken up. So I also have like a, a fitness tab for any research that I'm doing and I log everything in there for any automations and workflows. Just anything that is related to that is organized so I can just easily navigate through into anything related to that particular product. Again, for Bumble, swiping dashboards and so on. Um, the Integromat course that I'm currently working on, this has active scenarios that I'm working on as well up here. We have folders where I can view all of my um, 
all the different tabs related to kind of sub projects within each project. I was like the type of person who before in Chrome would literally have over a hundred tabs open and arc just provides a way to kind of make that manageable. Um, it's just very, very well thought out design. Um, it, it's, is what I would say. And again, there's, I just couldn't imagine going back to anything else. A couple of other things that I'll go through is here. They have very easy access to your downloads folder. So I can, instead of needing to open finder to grab something, I just hover over here. I can drag in anything that's newly downloaded. Or if we come in here, uh, it gives me a summary of the media in my downloads folder of my downloads. If I want to easily access that easels and notes. Um, a view of all of my different spaces so I can easily navigate through them, reorder them, see all of the tabs that I have opened. And they also have a feature where they will automatically archive your tab. So I have that set to 30 days. If I don't open a tab for more than 30 days, it will just automatically close it. And of course, if I ever need to get it back, then I can just come into my archive tabs and grab it. Uh, but chances are, if I haven't opened it in 30 days, it's just kind of taking up space. So it kind of manages keeping everything um, really, really clean for you. A few other nice features that they have is, is if I play something on Spotify or if I play something on YouTube, got some classical music here. You see, I have this pinned thing down here so I can pause it, I can move on to the next song. And again, this will just follow me through all of my spaces. So now instead of using the Spotify app, generally I will use um, up, up here. And they also have the same for any other, not any other, I think it's most like media sites, like on videos, for example, um, most things are supported that I can turn it into, it will do a picture in picture player. And again, I can play and pause it from, from here. So just simple things, but just really well thought out. They also have a, a command bar so I can search through all of my tabs. Um, Something that I always used to deal with as an issue would be um, would be uh, looking through Chrome for for something that I kind of left open. So I can just come in here and, and search for anything um, anything that I need to open. All my recently opened tabs are all all stored here. Um, and you'll also see some other features like they have some integrations. Like I can view my up upcoming calendar events just by hovering over my calendar. They haven't introduced something with Slack, but it will be really nice to hover over and see my messages. And with Notion, I can see all my recently opened Notion tabs um, simply just by hovering over. So they have that integration with a few different um, different tools and they literally release new new updates every single week. Okay, next I'm going to introduce you to a tool called Raycast. So you may have remembered before I spoke about a tool called Slapdash. Um, I am still a fan of Slapdash. It was since acquired by ClickUp, um, which, and since that kind of happened, there's not really been any, um, and any good updates at all. So uh, I found a replacement named Raycast. Um, it's this interface here. Um, Dark mode, total dark system appearance. Um, so from this, I can basically run commands just from my command bar. I can kind of work the same as like your, your finder search would do. I can look for any documents locally on my computer. Um, and you can see all of these different shortcuts that I'm able to run. So create a database page, search my tabs in Arc. It integrates with the browser that we just walked through. Set output device to AirPods, um, open unread messages, play Spotify, open Airtable. Uh, of course, it's got G TP3 um, integrated as well. So I can ask AI for some in information without ever needing to to, to go anywhere um, and it will it literally just opens the interface here to be able to run any command like that. I also have all of my tasks available. It integrates with Notion. Um, I've got my clipboard history here and they have, um, I open there. I like it. They've just got loads of tools so I can open their store. The great thing about this is um, that's quite interesting as well. So yeah, they have, uh, I'm going to install that because I am a fan of one thing, install extension. So these are like some different extensions that they have. I can do, I can Google translate. I can like you, they've just got hundreds of different apps. And the thing that is great about this compared to, um, 
compared to Slapdash is they have a much, much bigger developer community. Um, so you can see all of the plugins here that are kind of independently built and maintained. Um, and there's literally just hundreds of extensions here, just little things you can add into your day-to-day -day workflows. Um, I can send out API requests. I can manage my to-do list. I can manage Notion. Um, the list literally just goes on forever. So um, we can run all types of commands from the command bar. And I actually also prefer the UI of this, to be honest, over, um, that's another interesting one, two-factor authentication. I actually prefer the UI of this over Slapdash. So uh, I, I migrated from Slapdash over to Raycast. Uh, it's also free, actually. And again, it's open source, so anyone can kind of contribute to, um, to the code base and release whatever plugins and, and extensions they want, but you can see how many different features they have. So um, really, really good app and yeah, fits very well into my, into my, my workflow um, for, for all different types of, of features. Um, there's another one, you can run confetti. And finally, I'm going to introduce you probably to the biggest change in my um, in, in my workflow, which is motion. So this kind of gets quite interesting. Um, I, I manage all of my projects and all of my tasks still within Notion. Um, and I really like Notion as like a project management database kind of because of all of the flexibility that's there. Um, but now if I come into, it just gets a little bit, there's no calendar integration in Notion, which I always found a little bit annoying, for example, like no time blocking. Um, and you then have to, it's not so easy to just open and see what I need to do now. For that, Notion can be a little bit clunky. Um, so I choose to use Motion for this. They're completely unrelated. As much as the names rhyme, um, they've, they've got no relation whatsoever. So I guess I'll just open up the, um, so Motion is like an AI calendar manager. Um, so if we come in here, it will automatically, so I integrate with my Google Calendar um, for various different emails, for all of the different emails that I use, all the different calendars that I have. And so I add in, it automatically pulls in, you know, the meetings that I have, the times that I have blocked out. For example, I block myself out three hours per day in the morning to focus on my health, to go to the gym, to do some, some other things. I block out some time in the evening as well, again, just to take from, for myself. Um, and Motion will just read my calendar, see the availability that I have, and it will automatically schedule tasks for me. So I have an API integration between my Notion, in, um, Notion database and my Motion database, uh, which I built on Integromat. It's also part of the Integromat course, by the way. Um, so anytime I plan out everything in Notion, which is then synced over and given to Motion, and Motion, <laughs> this is getting ridiculous, Motion has the responsibility um, to find spaces within my calendar um, where I where it will set assign all of my tasks that need to be completed. So it also, it looks like this. So I will add in a name of a task. I can choose if it's a one-time task or a recurring task. I give it a task name. I give the duration of the task. So how long I need for it to, how, how long it needs to be done. If it puts ASAP, it will automatically re, re, um, organize my entire calendar, uh, all of the tasks that it had scheduled to get this into position number one so that it's ticked off. Um, you can also choose to split tasks into chunks so it will find some little um, spaces that I have throughout the day and schedule 15 minutes here to work on that, 30 minutes there to finish it off, whatever it is. Um, or if I assign it as a high priority task, um, of course it will be prioritized over the other things. So this app essentially works as an executive assistant over your entire calendar for task execution, um, which I really, really like. 
So again, I just schedule everything in Notion. Um, so when I say schedule, I mean I plan out all of the tasks that I want to complete that need to be completed for a specific project, for me to keep my projects moving forward, for any you know open loops that I have, any responsibilities that need to be completed. I just write them all out in Notion. It's all organized within my Notion dashboard. And then it's literally synced over to Motion and Motion then sees I've got these 50 tasks to complete and I give them their set priorities and Motion will then go and schedule them all throughout my calendar and just fill out my calendar. As you can see, with right now we're working on YouTube content recording and I've got the rest of my tasks for the day and I can come out into my weekly review, uh, my weekly view uh, and it will show me all of the tasks that I have scheduled for that specific week. And if I tick off a task from here, let's say I complete it quicker, it will just put, pull in a new one. And so I never have to think about any, it removes all of the friction in terms of execution. All I do is every single week, I will plan out all of the tasks that I want to complete for the, the upcoming seven days. And of course, like new tasks pop up, in which case it's very easy for me to just add them in here if it's a quick task or add them into Notion and it, they'll just be synced over anyway. So the schedules do change. And again, Motion is just super versatile because I can just put ASAP. If something pops up that's urgent, I can put ASAP and it will get put to number one priority in my list. It will be scheduled immediately or high priority or low priority is something that I want to remember, try to do within the next three to six months. Um, I think we will have kind of plenty of tasks like that. So it's kind of a huge weight taken off of your your brain that you know everything is in your motion system and all i need to do is check my calendar which is obviously integrated on my phone uh, i have on a tv up here my calendar as well always visible i can literally look over and see that is what i need to be completing right now there's now i've completely removed the burden of thinking what task needs to be done next and am i going to get everything done today as long as i follow everything that is scheduled in my calendar by motion um every, everything will get done and of course like I, i'm only human you know there are days when things go wrong when i fall behind on something where there's some distractions you know whatever it may be um but again motion will literally just re push over to the next day based on my prioritization system based on what priority i've given to each task it will just go ahead and push a task back to the next day um to make sure that everything kind of gets gets completed so again highly recommend um checking it out it's again these are kind of early stage tools raycast is and raycast is super um, nice to use very very nice app to use arc is also great to use but again it, it's in beta motion is a little bit clunky i would say um so that is why i prefer to do everything over in notion and then just kind of use motion as the scheduling engine to, to plan out my, my calendar. Uh, and then as the actual calendar itself, I prefer the interface of Cron, which is what I also have on my, on, on my phone um, to kind of view all of the, the upcoming tasks. So I don't really like to work from, from the tasks database within Motion um, just because it's a little bit clunky again, and it's not that flexible compared to, to, to Notion. Um, so yeah, they are my three recommendations that I genuinely encourage everyone to go and check out. Um, super interesting tools, Motion currently being like the, the number one tool for me. Um, the Notion to Motion, <laughs> Notion to Motion integration has been, um, it's actually been a bit of a game changer for me uh, in terms of my, my workflow. Um, simply because I no longer need to think or retain any thoughts in my mind about what tasks need to be completed or is everything scheduled. That is being completely outsourced to Motion to plan and schedule my, um, my entire calendar. So yeah, hope that was helpful. Uh, as always, any questions, feel free to leave uh, some comments down below. And genuinely, if there are some interesting tools that you've discovered recently, um, this isn't for me trying to boost engagement on my YouTube. Feel free to comment them down below or feel free to uh, send me like a message on Telegram or an email or whatever it is. Like I'm very much an early adopter and I love playing around and trying out um, new tools. So th these are the ones I've been using most recently um, that I found most effective and I've kept within my, my workflow. So um, yeah, but let me know if there's anything, any other interesting tools that I've been 
been missing out on because I would love to, to take a look.